Welcome to the standard and custom objects quiz. What we're going to be doing in this lecture is going through some practice questions and figuring out the secret to unlocking the standard and custom objects section of the exam. Now remember, I just said that there's a section of standard and custom objects. In fact, the standard and custom objects will be dispersed amongst your exam, amongst the 60 questions. And so what this lecture is going to do is help you identify the standard custom and objects questions and we're going to give you a few hacks to figure out how to answer them. Let's take a look at the first one. What's the difference between standard and custom objects? So let's think about this before we even dive into the options. When we think about standard, we think about objects that come with Salesforce, with whatever edition or license that one has in Salesforce. Custom is what we create, right? We customize. All right, so let's look at that. Standard objects are limited to a standard set of fields. Custom objects are a map of custom fields. Standard objects include standard layouts. Custom objects allow you to change their layouts. Standard objects are included with Salesforce by default. Custom objects are objects that you can create in your organization. So, as I mentioned, when we're thinking about our objects, right, um, when you get a package of Salesforce, you get a set of standard objects. However, each organization is unique, and so custom objects are what you create to meet your organization's needs. All of the following are examples of force.com objects, except all object attributes are described with metadata, making it easy to create and modify records programmatically or through a visual interface. Every object in Salesforce organization is automatically linked with all, with, with all other objects in the organization. Objects can have relationship fields that define how records in an object relate to records in another object and objects have built-in support for access management, validation, formulas, and history tracking. So let's think about, most of these could be considered advantages of any system, right? So when we're thinking about relationship fields, when we're thinking about support and access, these are advantages. So this question is a bit tricky. What we've got to think about is what a, um, an advantage that wouldn't necessarily be in this package right except and that and that's sometimes the tricky part with these questions is that it feels like everything should fit but you've got to discern so let's have a look and as we go through this we see that every object in salesforce organization is automatically linked with all other objects in the organization right so this is something that it is one of those pieces that you just have to know with the force.com objects and the advantages and this is one of those that is an exception, okay? Moving from the account object to the contact object is an example of what type of relationship. Now remember, in the previous lecture when I spoke about the content uh, for this particular section and talking about master detail relationships, lookups and all these kind of things, right? So let's talk about the kind of relationships, related lists, lookups, child to parent, one to many, and parent to child. So. We're moving from the account object to the contact object, right? So from one object to another. What is the kind of relationship? So we can see here that there's a related list, okay? So when we have accounts and contacts, we have a related list attached to that. Secondly, we have a one-to-many. So one account can have many contacts, right? And finally, parent to child. So we have the account, and then underneath, we have a child relationship. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this hierarchy of pieces that we have, these account hierarchies, okay? So right here, we have a parent, and then we have children, all right? And you'll remember from the previous slide, there's actually a limit to the number of children every parent can have, right? There isn't an unlimited number. So... When we're thinking about these relationships, often what's important to consider is what is the parent and the relationship between the parent and the child. And so you can think about this in terms of a marketing campaign. 
you may have an overriding campaign that becomes the parent campaign and underneath that you may have sub campaigns which become the child campaigns of the parent campaign right so this is an example of a hierarchy and these are the kind of um, relationships that you can have moving from the account object to the contact object for example I want to talk a little bit more about master detail relationships the master is the parent, right? The detail is the child, as we saw in that uh, slide earlier. Standard objects can't be on the detail side because they come standardized from Salesforce. They become automatically the parent, right? You can't exceed 10,000 child records for a master detail relationship. Undeleting the master record also undeletes detail and sub-detail records. You'll remember when we had those two hanging chains in the previous lecture and when we said master detail is if you cut the top chain all the other chains the links in those chains will fall down because the master is connecting all the children right and then we compare that to a lookup which is looking between two objects looking between two objects so if you cut the link on one it's not going to affect the other one right so what this is saying is that if you undelete the parent, the children will automatically re-link themselves, okay? You can create a multi-level master detail relationship. You need the custom application user permission to create this. And you can have up to three custom level details. Okay. Criteria-based sharing rules can be created for which objects? So sharing rules, we have some of these standard objects, contacts, leads, opportunities, campaigns, and accounts. Um, I'm going to give you a second to think about what, which one you think, or which of these. There's, for, by the way, this is a multiple answer question. I'll give you time to think about that for a second. Okay, so the answer is in fact all of them, right? You can create sharing rules across all of these objects. All right, which one of the following features can be used to make a field required? All right. So we have page layout, record type, validation rules, field level security, and formula field. So let's think about this. Some of these are, are nice to have, some of these are needs to have. So what of the following features can be used to make a field required? Now I'm thinking about when I'm on a record page and I am trying to create, for example, a event or I'm trying to create a task. There's often um, fields that I have to fill out and those often come due to validation rules right so I have to have certain things in place before I can edit another feature that often happens another thing is the page layout so the way in which the certain fields that I see some of which may be compulsory fields before I can create um, and so the page layout field is important let's look at the scenario Universal Containers, which is this um, company that Salesforce creates, just to give us an example, wants to ensure that users complete the standard industry field when creating a new account record. So they want to make that field compulsory, right? Or mandatory. To address this concern, the administrator set the industry field as required. Okay. However, some users are still able to create a new record without completing the industry field. What should an administrator do? administrator do to troubleshoot this issue choose two options so admin has made it required but people are still able to create this without inserting that field let's take a look at what the admin can do to troubleshoot this issue first let's look at the options a verify the users have the edit permission for accounts on their profiles b Verify the users have the modify all data permission for all accounts on their profiles. C. Verify the field level security for the industry field is not set to read only on the user's profiles. D. Verify the industry field is set as required on all page layouts assigned to the user profiles. Okay, so first things first. We know that this field is required all right, and yet some people are able to create this, create the record without putting this in. So we we know immediately that A is not incorrect because 
users are automatically already editing this record, right? So they don't need the edit permission. All right, so that's A, it's out the way. Verify the users have the modify all data permission for accounts on their profile. Once again, the user is already editing, so they're already able to modify, right? This is about um, permissions that restrict users to fill in a specific field, right? So verify the field level security for the industry field is set is not set to read only on users' profiles. Verify the industry is set as required on all account page layouts assigned to the user's profile. All right, so it's between C and D. I'm going to give you a second to think about what that answer could be. Okay, let's take a look. It is in fact both. I like to trick us sometimes by um, just throwing in a wild card out there. And this is because you've got to make sure that uh, the field is not set to read only on certain profiles, and that's really the crux of this one. And, and secondly, you've got to verify that the industry field is set as required on all account page layouts. Remember, in the previous slide, we talked about validation rules and page layouts, and that's where this question comes into play. How can a sales user relate an opportunity to a campaign, right? So, A, use the campaign influences li related list on the opportunity. Select the primary campaign source for the opportunity. Select the campaign record type when creating the opportunity and use the campaign hierarchy related list on the opportunity. So let's think about this for a moment. All right. So we have the influences, and remember we've spoken a little bit about the influences and how influences are able to show you the extent to which someone has purchased something as a result of marketing. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say that you ran an ad campaign via the web and an ad campaign via print media or TV. And a sale has resulted in that, but you're not sure where that sale really related from, right? So the influence of the campaign gives weight to either of those and helps you th see the effectiveness or the return on investment of your print compared to your web marketing campaign, right? So that's the idea of an influencer. So let's look, how can a user relate an opportunity to a campaign? And so let's have, take a look here. Use the campaign influencers related list in the opportunity select the primary campaign source for the opportunity. So that is the answer, A and B. The influencer makes the connection between the opportunity and the campaign, and you select the primary campaign source for the opportunity. In other words, you tag what we could call tagging the primary campaign to the opportunity.